I don't know why, but I'm gonna participate in our fantasy <laughs> bingo. This book is just pure nonsense, and it just feels like it's being pure nonsense just for the sake of being pure nonsense. Welcome to a new vlog. It is Sunday. It was supposed to be my incredibly busy day doing a ton of Easter things, but most of those plans actually got canceled, which is sad. So I am honestly a little happy at the same time because like I am just absolutely exhausted today. I completely reorganized and cleaned my closet last night, like late last night. I don't know what I was thinking. So now I'm super exhausted because I got like hardly any sleep and I've just been feeling very tired all day and I even tried taking a nap and I couldn't really sleep so that's unfortunate but uh welcome to the vlog so it's like Sunday afternoon I'm just chilling I'm just about to play some of my cozy video game but wanted to share with you all some books that I got for Easter my mom likes to spoil me for Easter and she always gets me a couple of books so the first one I got is a game of hearts and heists which I'm so excited about this is a series by Ruby Rowe who I recently read a book from which is um what is it called house of crimson hearts i loved that book so this is her other series that she has and i'm really really excited because i really love her romanticy books like they're real good and i can't exactly remember what this one is about but uh it says enemies to lovers heist found family a secret royal babes on bikes and only one bed trope so that sounds real fun to me next up is fathom folk which i had put on my list because i think this is going to be an illuminated edition and this sounded so good but now I'm seeing it has like a two star average rating, which uh, is not great <laughs> at all. So I'm still gonna give it a chance, you know, cause you never know. Uh, it's, it's published by Orbit too. And usually I really enjoy Orbit stuff, but uh, apparently the peeps aren't enjoying it, but I'm still gonna read it regardless. This one I'm incredibly excited about because I really wanted this specific edition of this book, and that is Blood Over Bright Haven by ML Wang. I have been really interested in this one. So many people read this for Realmathon, and it sounds really, really good. It's a standalone, which I really think we need more standalone fantasy books in fantasy. I, I know it's probably harder to write a standalone because it's by itself and you're not using multiple books to develop characters in the world but I feel like there is such a lack for standalones because man I I need some more standalones in my life <laughs> even like a series of standalones would be so nice because they could just be connected but they could be totally read separate you know anyways I'm so incredibly excited for this one and I'm so happy to have it the last book I have I am so excited that I have I almost completely forgot it was even on my list and that is Tales of the Celestial Kingdom by Su Lin Tan. This is a collection of short stories from before, during, and after the Daughter of the Moon Goddess series which I'm really excited about. Like this is the perfect short little book. It's not even 200 pages that I could read during a little readathon and I probably could have read this all today if I was not so tired for Realmathon. I'm just exhausted and also kind of burnt out from Realmathon. I'm just tired of competitive reading you know like a whole month of reading like crazy it's a little exhausting but speaking of reading I am currently reading two books that I would like to get done this week definitely one of them I will get done this week but the other one we'll just see it's kind of a chunk so I'm still reading Sunbringer actually I have the book right here let me show y'all so I am still reading Sunbringer I actually have switched to the ebook now I finally got it in from the library because I didn't want to mess up the beautiful sprayed edges by like cracking open the spine so I am still currently reading this and it's going really good I'm enjoying it a fair bit I don't think it's as good as book one for me but I am liking it and then my audiobook, which I'm actually not reading just the audiobook because it's a really complicated story. I'm also following along in the ebook, is A Peculiar Peril by Jeff Vandermeer. This is my in person book club pick for April. Our meeting is not next week, but the week after. It's the second Thursday of the month. 
and I'm not liking this one. I'm really not liking it. <laughs> I don't like the characters. I don't like the writing style. I don't like it at all, but I'm really gonna push through and try to give it more of a chance because I'm only like 10% into it, and this book is like 700 pages. So I think I'll give it to maybe the 20 to 25% mark, which is like a good decent chunk of the book, and if I'm still feeling the way I'm feeling, I'm probably gonna DNF it. But Magical Readathon starts tomorrow officially, which is very exciting. So I think my plan tomorrow is to start and finish the yellow wallpaper because it is so incredibly short. It will seriously take me 20 minutes to read because <laughs> it's like a 40 minute audiobook. So I'm gonna try to listen to that tomorrow to just already knock off a book for Magical Readathon. And then the only other thing going on for April is there's an Animal Crossing readathon that Steph is hosting for us patrons, which I'm so incredibly excited about. So that's coming up in the next like week or so. And uh, you'll be hearing more about it then, but I'm so incredibly excited. I made a whole reading spread for it. And I even made, cause as you read, you get to collect like the various buildings and stuff in Animal Crossing. So I went ahead and printed them off so I could like put them in my reading journal as I earned them, which I just think is absolutely adorable. And I have villagers, so you like roll um, like a random number generator and get characters who are villagers to come stay with you. And I got punchy and lucky and I'm just like adorable. And I made my passport and I'm just so excited. So I'm gonna probably use up a couple of reading journal pages just for this Animal Crossing readathon to put in my TBR and put in all the various things that I collect. And I'm very excited. Like, I just, I love me a 48 hour readathon. Like, apparently I can read a ton during those. So hopefully I can do the same because I still have lots of short books that I can read for that. But thankfully, that's not coming up for a while. And this is also gonna be a series of 48 hour readathons which makes me even more excited. So anyway, friends, I'm going to just relax and play some of my cozy video game and just kind of try to wake up. And then um, at like 5.30 we have dinner, so I still have quite a bit till then. I think I'm gonna save my workout till after dinner because I really don't feel like doing it right now. Typically on the weekend, I would do my workout at like three or four, like before dinner, but I don't have the energy. So I think after dinner will be a better plan. And then, yeah, I'm just getting ready for work tomorrow. I spent pretty much all day cleaning yesterday. I cleaned out my closet, which was such a disaster. And I got these new like tote bags and I just kind of refreshed my closet. I pulled out some t-shirts I haven't worn in a while to put in a bin. And then I emptied out one of these bins that I wanna make for workout clothes because Torrid is gonna be hosting an event, like a cash event coming up soon, which will save me a ton of money. So currently I have like a whole new workout wardrobe in there, like all new sports bras, which I don't even have any. I just have one and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. But obviously one is not enough to work out with for a full week because you know, I'm sweating and it gets gross, you know. And then I have their performance sport workout leggings in my cart as well because I've just been buying like their cheapo leggings and they just fall apart. Like the inside seams are just shredded. So I'm gonna get like all new leggings, which hopefully these will be better quality and will actually live up to working out with. So I have all that sitting in my cart. I also have a ton of reward money, which I don't even know how I earned. So I'm gonna be buying that pretty soon, like as soon as the Torrid event starts. And then uh, I'm gonna need a place for them. So emptied out a tote bag so I can put all my workout gear in there and It'll be great, and I'm looking forward to it. So, anywho's, it was a productive day. I'm gonna relax for a little bit now, and I will chat with you all later. We made it through Monday, friends. So I just wanted to pop on here and show y'all the 20 stickers that I ordered from Book Babe Designs. She is my absolute favorite bookish merch creator on the interwebs and I ordered two packs of her like random sticker packs that she had up recently and she did warn there's gonna be duplicates if you order more than one pack. I knew that. I ordered two because I'm like you know what 
I do not mind duplicates because I can use them in so many different ways and my Kindle has been screaming for an update on the stickers on the back. And so I've been doing a new thing, let me show you, where I put a piece of paper, I measured my Kindle, put a piece of paper on the back with stickers. So this is my newest background. I just used a black piece of paper and just put some stickers on here and I think it looks so cute because I had stuck stickers like directly onto my Kindle, which is not like a bad thing, but like I get tired of seeing them. So I'm just gonna make a bunch of these like paper cutouts, maybe the different colored papers and put different stickers on here. So when I get sick of these, I could just switch them out. How smart using the old noggin for once. <laughs> so let me just show you all these stickers. There's gonna be some duplicates, but I'm just so excited. So we have enemies to lovers. Look at this little ghosty. Maybe I'll just show you one at a time. A little ghosty with paper and books. We have a like little Valentine's Day ghosty. My camera's not cooperating. Come on. Look at the little ghosty. There we go. Look. And then we have this pumpkin ghosty. Absolutely adorable. Hello camera. Thank you. And then this one is so cute. It's like a springtime ghosty. He's so cute. Seriously, camera, come on. Get with the program. Get with the program. Thank you. Then we have read, what is, I can't read this backwards. Spread love read books. There we go. <laughs> then we have raise hell read books. I'm down. I am obsessed with this one. I am obsessed with the patch of this as well. Hoping that comes in stock soon. Then I got a bunch of suckers, which is cute. So a sucker for vampires, sucker for smut, <laughs> sucker for slow burn, another sucker for vampires, and yet another sucker for smut, if you're gonna work. Okay, cool. And then there's just a couple duplicates to spread love read books, the enemies to lovers, this gorgeous, gorgeous one, and more ghosties. So I'm obsessed. I'm thinking the duplicates I'll probably just use in my journal or use on my Kindle or something. I'm gonna find something for them. <laughs> but I also wanted to pop on here and say that I have DNF'd a peculiar peril or particular peril. I really hate this title and I couldn't do it. I'm so sorry I couldn't do it. <laughs> this is for my in-person book club, which I feel terrible for DNFing it, but the writing style is making me angry and I can't, I can't stand not knowing what is going on. Like in fantasy, I'm kind of used to that, okay? You read a little bit, we'll start to get things. No, this book is just pure nonsense and it just feels like it's being pure nonsense just for the sake of being pure nonsense. It's driving me insane. <laughs> so we're done. We're done. I gave it a good shot. 20%. I'm like, nah, I'm done with you. So we said goodbye. We said goodbye. We're done. So now I'm just focusing on Sunbringer. But I have also started the audiobook for Lore of the Wilds. And it's going okay. Um, it makes me sad knowing that Lala has given this book one star. So... Uh, um, that's gonna be interesting as I continue reading it. But it's definitely reading YA, and I could have sworn this was YA, but then everybody's been saying it's adult. So I'm confused about that, but it's fine. I'm listening to the audiobook on Spotify, which I just can totally forget to use that half the time. So I need to put like a reminder on my phone. Listen to an audiobook on Spotify every month, you know, make it worth my dollars. But anyways, I need to feed the cats and then, uh, have dinner and exercise and make lunch tomorrow and hopefully read tonight. So that's the plan, but um, Sunbringer's going okay. I don't like it as much as God Killer, which is unfortunate, but um, yeah, just wanted to show you my cute stickers. And um, I have an allergy testing appointment next week where I'm gonna get stabbed with lots of needles to figure out what I'm allergic to. So exciting. So I thought it was just supposed to be a consultation appointment, but then today they're like, now nah, we're gonna do the test. I'm like, oh great, great, wow, that's exciting. So I had to let my supervisor know, hey, um, I have like a two to four hour appointment <laughs> next week. 
and uh, it was supposed to just be an hour, but they changed it, and now they want to stab me with um, hundreds of needles to figure out what I'm allergic to, so. Wow, why do I do this to myself? <laughs> but I'm really dying to know, because there is some foods that I know I've been eating that I'm allergic to, but I don't know what it is. Like, I, I don't know if it's the ingredients, or like if it's specifically gluten, or what. So, it'll be good to know, but I'm not excited about this. Um, hopefully, I don't know, I think they do it on your back. Maybe they do it on your arms. I don't know, I think they do it on your back. And they just use your back as like a map and just boop, poke ya tons of times. I don't think it's hundreds of times. I'm just being super dramatic. I think it's maybe like 20 to 25. I think they're testing like 900 different things, but I think a lot of those things are like intermixed into the various vials. I don't know, I'm not a doctor. So <laughs> I'm just assuming that's what it is. But yeah, I got the text about that this morning and I'm like, absolutely not. Oh wait, it's April Fool's. I got, I got, I got to tell you guys about this. <laughs> so sorry. So I get to work as you do. And I'm sitting there and I get an email from HR and I'm like, well dang, that's like official. And it's about this new uniform policy. And I'm like, really? Cause I know they've been trying to make people dress a little bit more business casual. I do work for my local government. So, you know, want to look somewhat decent, you know? So I thought of something about that, like reinstating, hey, y'all need to like look professional at work. So I open it I start reading it and I'm like, oh my gosh, ew, we gotta wear like, brand specific polos and black pants only, leather shoes only, and I'm like, that's really specific, and modest hairstyles, no flamboyant jewelry, and watches only. Like, it's all very official. I'm like, dang, and then like you have to buy your own uniform and you have to keep it looking nice, and if it starts looking ratty, you gotta replace that ASAP, and I'm like, this sounds terrible. I'm like, I don't wanna do this. Wear a polo shirt? No, I hate polo shirts, okay? those collars I just I feel like I'm being strangled I don't appreciate it so I keep scrolling and it's like signed by like all the official people I'm like holy cow what in tarnation is going on until you get to the very very end and it says happy April Fool's Day I'm like oh yeah I forgot that was today <laughs> so that was a great jump scare first thing in the morning um i was truly getting a little riled up about it like i had messaged my mom because we work in the same building like in totally different departments though and so i messaged her i'm like what in tarnation is this i can't wear my converse no more what is this and then i kept reading I'm like, um oh, i'm just kidding just kidding it was a joke which was funny it was actually it was a good one that it got me there for a minute but um anyways yeah that was the only april fool's joke that i kind of fell for today everything else i don't think there really was any um g did one on her sprints today but i didn't i don't know i didn't really catch it as a joke in the first place <laughs> i don't know it didn't really bother me but um yeah it's super fun getting an email from hr that you have like a whole uniform change just to realize what day it is so fun I got my new glasses. I love these. They are so much better than the Glasses USA ones. These are just so much better. <laughs> like I feel like they fit my face a lot better and they actually fit me because those other ones are just a little small and I got a big noggin. So I'm actually gonna return the Glasses USA ones and get my $255 back. So that'll be really nice because I'm not happy with them. They were good interim glasses, but these are like 30 times better. So I'm excited to start wearing these full time. I should actually start wearing them full time. <laughs> also, if you hear weird noises in the background, UPS is here. They are dropping off my MGK hoodie. I'm so excited. We'll be getting to that in a minute. But I have some other packages. So only it's open. I have not done like an unboxing portion in a vlog. And I don't even know how long. Because I always forget to do so. But none of this is particularly exciting. But I guess I'll show y'all anyway. So your girl's anemic. So got some more iron supplements because i need it and to help i think this helps with the iron like digesting your body or whatever but it's also good for me having hashimoto's but i got some more b12 um 
I just, this stuff's good. It works good. I just take it at night. And then I have been obsessed with Moroccan oil hair products recently. I use their clarifying shampoo and their hair mask and it does wonders for my hair. Like my, I feel like I went to the salon. It's like salon quality hair stuff. So I decided to get their shampoo and conditioner. This is so stupid expensive, <laughs> but I want to give it a try and see if this makes a difference. Plus I love the smell of their products and I've been an herbal essence girly my whole life, but you know, maybe it's time I upgrade to like actual salon quality hair care, but I don't know, we'll see. And then, and then, I've been waiting weeks for this. I am so excited. There's a story behind this. If I can get it out of the box without breaking any nails, that would be absolutely wonderful. So I don't know if this video is still public because I privated a bunch of my older videos because they're just cringy. And I don't know if this is one of them, but I have here the Canon EOS R50. Fun little story about this. I had actually used some gift card money a couple of months ago and bought this camera. And I had bought it at a time when I honestly was not doing very well mental health wise. And when I got the camera, I was like, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. So I sent it back and I spent the gift card money in a different way. I think I just bought some random little things for the house that I like actually needed. And then my channel has been growing a lot recently, which has been making me feel super proud of my content. I'm really happy with the content that I'm producing currently. And I'm like, no, you know what? You do deserve nice things. And I kind of had like a little cry <laughs> after I bought this because I actually got a really decent amount of money back on my tax return, so it covered this camera and I was like no you deserve nice things like telling myself that is so hard because I want to tell myself I don't that I shouldn't have nice things that I shouldn't buy myself things and it's like no change that mindset so here we are here we are again. <laughs> so if you've been on my channel for a while, you're probably like, why do you have this again? Well, there's a story for you. So, so happy to have this camera back because I love this camera. I did. I just felt so unworthy of it. And I'm so excited to have this little camera back in my life. So I'm gonna put the battery on the charge and this came in perfect timing because I have so many videos that I need to film this weekend that I'd like to like, you know, pre-film and get ready. But, oh, let's just do a little unboxing together. Oh, I just love the size of, the, of this camera. Like, it's not too big. It's not too small. It's actually the same weight as my Canon G7X Mark II, which I'm currently filming on. And it's gonna remain my vlogging camera. Oh, hee <laughs> hee. But this is gonna be my sit down video and maybe like special vlog or like themed vlog camera to keep it separate from my like, you know, weekly vlog camera. But, oh, she's a stunner. All right, let's keep unboxing because obviously there's still more in here. Got the battery. I don't know why buying batteries and shipping them to Alaska is literally like <laughs> so hard. I would love to have a couple more batteries for my G7X and this camera but they won't ship here. And I'm like, well, obviously you ship the camera here with a battery. Why can't you ship more batteries? It's so annoying. <laughs> and I got a little neck strap. And let's see, this should be the lens. I'm assuming it feels like a lens. It surely is. And I think that's it. Also with the $255, oh, that is so cold. <laughs> I'm gonna be getting back from Glasses USA. I really want to upgrade some elements of my desk because there are just some things on my desk that I've had for years and they're just, you know, they're not the greatest quality. Like the keyboard that I have for my gaming computer is like atrociously horrible. Okay, come on, baby. Work with, where's the click? There she is. Oh, we're back. I'm so excited. Okay, what was I saying? Um, oh yes, my, um, keyboard that I have for my gaming computer is atrocious. <laughs> it was like a $10 keyboard mouse combo that I got off Amazon. Highly don't recommend that. And it's like atrocious. <laughs> like typing on it, I hate it. And so I'm like, you know what? 
we should do a little desk upgrade. And so I have a desk mat on my desk because this is like a really rusty, dusty, and crusty desk that the previous owners left behind. And I mean, I, I really like it, but it's ugly so i have a desk mat over it to kind of cover it up and so i like this one better for work so i want to take this desk mat and take it to work and then get a new desk mat get a new keyboard i found one that i'm obsessed with it has a cat on it it's like really cute it's like a really high-end keyboard i'm very excited it's one that like changes colors and stuff and then there was something else that i wanted to get just like a few other little desk things like some lights um, some more like ambient lighting around my desk because I do sit at my desk quite a bit, especially on the weekends editing videos or playing my cozy video games on my gaming computer, which I bought for like a super cheap price from one of my coworkers who works in the digital services department, which used to be called computer services. And her husband was getting rid of his gaming computer because he like got something better and they were selling it for like dirt cheap. And I'm like, I will take it seriously. I, I will buy it from you. So I bought it from her and funnily enough I guess her husband wanted like a lot more money than she had it listed for but she already sold it to me so no going back but I love this computer it's absolutely amazing and I upgraded the RAM in it so oh hello <laughs> so it's like a powerhouse I'm obsessed but anyways so Oh, if you don't know, I'm like a tech girly. I mean, not really, but like I did several, several years of IT stuff in high school and college and I love it. I find it really interesting. I find technology really interesting. It scares me a little bit, but I love computers mainly. But anyways, so that's kind of the plan. I want to just kind of revamp my desk area a little bit, especially because I rearranged a ton of furniture recently. I have some spaces that need occupying or reorganizing. I said reorganizing really weird. But um, anyways, so yeah, that's the plan. Um, I'm just putting all the garbage over here. Yeah. Oh, I have reading updates for y'all. Let's go to the kitchen and I can get this battery on the charge and feed the cats and let's do that. But I have more updates for y'all. We're just gonna vlog on the go. Is this how the people do it? I don't know. So I told you I DNF'd a peculiar apparel, right? I think I did. And then I started and finished one of the books for Magical Readathon. So I'm already done with, oh, what's it called? The yellow wallpaper. So this was a prompt for reading something with yellow in the title, which I'm now realizing didn't mean necessarily like in the title, like it had to say like yellow face or yellow wallpaper or whatever. It just meant like a title that is yellow, but whatever. So that's how I interpreted it, which is fine, I guess. But yeah, so I read that um, yesterday and it was fine. I give it three stars. Very much reminds me of something I would have read in college. And if I paid like closer t attention to it and maybe annotated it or whatever, I could have probably done like a deep dive and really dug up some really meaningful things from it. But I'm done with that. <laughs> I'm just reading for fun. At this stage of my life, I'm done reading for deep dive analysis. I did that for four years in college. I'm done doing that, you know? <laughs> so it's hard to not do that sometimes. Like sometimes my brain just can't turn that off. It's really annoying, but yeah. So anyways, it was fine. Um, I didn't love it, but I read it. And then let's see, what else have I read? I did finish Sunbringer today. I sadly gave it three stars, which I'm so sad about. God Killer was five stars for me. I love that book. And I just think Sunbringer is a middle book. It suffers so, so bad from second book syndrome. And it definitely is just a filler book until book three, which I'm really disappointed by. And what I loved about God Killer was the like found found what, what kind of an accent was that <laughs> what i loved in god killer was the found family and we just didn't get that in this one i i everyone is separated and it just felt really chaotic and i was not a fan 
So I'm going to be focusing on Lore of the Wilds tonight. I'm still kind of getting into it. I really don't have many thoughts on it at the moment. So I'll keep you posted on that. But I should be starting a new book, which is going to be for a new themed vlog, which is going to be episode two of the Novelist videos, which I'm very excited about. I hope you guys like that series. I think it's fun. So I'm going to be starting a book for that. And then just gonna continue with Lore of the Wilds, get a couple of books. I'd like to get a few books done before the 48 hour readathon next week. But um, yeah, let's feed the cats and then let's go open my MGK sweatshirt package because I'm very excited about it. <laughs> Hi, we're in the sunroom. Also in the mail, I got these cute little um diamond art bookmark kit. Look at how adorable. So I got that and a dragon diamond painting, which I'm very excited about. So. Let's open this sweatshirt. I'm so excited. Okay, honestly, the back looks like it's been kicked and like run over maybe a couple times, but <laughs> we're gonna put it on. It's also extremely cold today. Like I cannot believe how cold it is. The wind, ridiculous. Let me put this on. I'm not gonna talk to you and look ridiculous putting this on. <laughs> okay, I'm obsessed. I love it. It's supposed to be like a green, but honestly, I it looks kind of gray to me. But the sleeves are nice and huge and long because I got the noodle arms and this actually fits pretty okay. I've had some of MGK's merch that I bought fit me really weird. Like, hold on, now I got hair clips stuck in my hair. <laughs> like, I have one of his hoodies that I ordered and it like doesn't fit me at all. And it's like my size. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's the material, but it fits like a small <laughs> on me. And I'm obviously not a small. So I don't know what happened with that, but I still have it. Maybe one day, if I eventually ever lose weight, maybe I'll fit into it. But um, yeah, I love this hoodie. It's just, I loved this. I know this sweatshirt is like specifically from like a concert or a show he did, but like, I don't care. I love the pattern and that's why I bought it. So, anywho, I'm gonna go get my workout gear on so I can work out as soon as dinner is done and go feed my parents' cats cause I live right next door and I always get there before my parents. But um, yeah, so toodaloo. And then rotate through here. Here we go. Strong core. Stretch, lots of mobility. I'm pulling the weights up towards my hips, towards my ribcage. Strong in that back, we're almost there. No repeat, right through here. Not coming up out of it, stay here, squeeze. Hi friends, happy Wednesday. We're halfway through the week, I'm so excited. So today I'm like, you know what? I don't know why, but I'm gonna participate in our fantasy <laughs> bingo. I have never even heard of this to be honest, but lots of people in the Discord have been talking about it. Cassidy posted a video about it today, and I've been real curious. So did some research, and I started to fall for the April Fool's bingo board. Don't do what I did. I'm like, how? This is an impossible board. I'm not gonna be able to read this many books with like bees. <laughs> And um, yeah, that was an April Fool's joke. So I actually found the actual board and started filling it out today. And I'm so impressed with myself. I found, okay, let me just pull it up so I can make sure I fact check myself. But all the books, most of the books I picked are books that I already own, which is absolutely incredible. So I actually, maybe I'll just run through what I picked real quick. That was really weird. There was like a weird light over there. Am I seeing things? Am I okay? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so, so for first in a series, I picked Rage of Dragons because I wanted it and it also fulfills, I'm going hard mode because of course I am. And I'm also gonna do the hero mode because obviously I review all of my books on here, so that is not a very difficult thing for me to do. So yeah, I'm doing hard mode because I'm crazy. <laughs> so, Rage of Dragons. And then for alliterative title, I picked The Adventures of Amina El Sarafi. And for hard mode, it does have three words or more that start with the same letter. For under the surface, it says, read a book where an important setting is either underground or underwater hard mode at least half of the book takes place underground or underwater 
I picked Fathom Folk. That may or may not fit. I know it's an underwater fantasy world, so we'll just see how it goes. Next up is read a book in which the main character is a criminal. Hard mode features a heist. Um, Cassidy recommended Foundry Side, so I'm gonna go with that. Next up is read a book where characters experience dreams, magical or otherwise. Hard mode is the dream is not mystical or unusual. It's just a normal dream. And according to the story graph challenge set up for this, people were putting Thornhedge. So we'll see how that one holds up. That one I may have to switch out for something else, but we'll just see. And then next up is read a book that has an animal in the title, and hard mode is the animal in the title is a fantasy or a sci-fi creature. So I picked Dragonfall, which is so perfect. I've been really wanting to read this book anyways. Next up is read a book in which the primary protagonist is a bard. Hard mode, the character is explicitly a bard because it says a bard, musician, poet, or storyteller. I picked a Fire Endless, which is the sequel to River Enchanted totally forgot that main character is actually a bard and it actually says that too so perfection next up i screamed when i found this out but read a book that has either a prologue or an epilogue but hard mode it has both and i'm gonna read the mist of avalon which i actually have sitting here this was a gift from a college friend of mine like so many years ago and I really want to read this. It's a big chunky classic fantasy and I'm very very excited for it. Alrighty next up self-published or indie pub. So this one only counts if it is like actually like indie pub um, and then the hard mode is that it has fewer than 100 ratings on Goodreads and I chose Aurora Sky Vampire Hunter because she's an Alaskan author who wrote this indie pub vampire fantasy horror book that I bought on vacation a couple weeks ago so I picked that and then romanticy um read a book that features romance as the main plot hard mode is that the main character is lgbtqia plus I chose a game of hearts and heists because it is lesbian romanticy so perfect. Next up is Dark Academia. This was so hard until I realized I had the perfect book. So it says um, includes a school or university and the hard mode is that the school itself is entirely mundane. I will have to verify this when I read the book but I chose Plain Bad Heroines. I'm not sure but I know it's Dark Academia so we're gonna go with it. Next up is read a book with at least three point of views but hard mode is at least five point of views. I put The Way of Kings because a lot of people put it for this prompt. So again, I may have to change it if that's not right, but I'm hoping it is because the five point of views is a lot. <laughs> All right, next up is published in 2024 and hard mode is that it's also the author's first published novel. I picked Voyage of the Damned because it's a debut, came out this year. I got the Illumicrate version. Perfect. Next up is read a book in which an important character has a physical or mental disability. Hard mode, the main character has a physical or mental disability. I chose the Unbroken because it's tagged as disability rep on Goodreads. So we'll see. I'm hoping it's the main character, but again, we'll just see. Next up, read a book that was published in the 1990s. Hard mode, the author or one of the authors has also published something in the last five years. I chose Parable the Sower, which I really want to read this year anyways, because this book is set in 2024, written in the 90s. I am so incredibly excited for this one. Next up was read a book featuring orcs, trolls, or goblins, hard mode, as the main character. I picked the unspoken name. I completely forgot this book existed until I saw it on Storygraph and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, this is perfect. Our main character is an orc. Yay! <laughs> Alrighty, next up, read a sci-fi book that features a large cast of characters and has a focus on social dynamics. It's basically a space opera. Hard mode, it's written by an author of marginalized gender identity. So I chose The Principle of Moments because I believe it's written by a POC author and that's all I really know. And I know it's sci-fi and I think it's a space opera. Plus I think people tagged it, so I think it works. Alrighty. Hi, we're back. My battery died, 
Sorry if I'm talking super fast. This is just a lot of prompts to go through. Don't worry, I will post a picture of my completed like bingo board that I have at the moment. Like I said, books might be switched out. I'll put that when I'm done talking about all of these so you can just kind of have a little glimpse of what it looks like. So next up is read a book by an author of color. Hard mode must be a debut novel published in the last five years. I have like the perfect book for this. And that is Camp Zero, which is like a sci-fi book that sounds so, so good to me. Next up is read a book in which the primary goal of the characters and story focuses on survival, hard mode, no pandemics or super viruses. So Cassidy recommended The Serpent and the Wings of Night. So I'm going to go with that because I do really want to read that this year. So it works out. I should mention this bingo board is for the entire year so it starts April 1st of 2024 and goes until March 31st of 2025 so you have a whole year to read 25 books which it's a little scary especially because I picked like huge books but if I read one or two a month it won't be that bad plus a lot of these I was gonna read anyways so next up is judge a book by its cover choose be Choose a book because you like its cover. Hard mode, pick the book based only on the information available on the cover, no reading the blurb. I chose The Hedge Witch of Fox Hall. I've never really heard of this book. I just saw the cover somewhere and love it. I seriously know nothing about it, so perfect. Next up, set in a small town, hard mode. The small town can be real or fictional, but the broader setting must be our real world and not a secondary world. So I have the best book for this, and that is From Bad to Cursed, because the town itself is fictional, and there's magic and stuff in this world, but it's set in like actual Illinois, United States, you know? So absolute perfection. And plus, I need to continue with that series. <laughs> and then, what's next? Um, read any five short stories or novels. Hard mode, read an entire speculative anthology or collection. I chose Africa Risen, which is a collection of a ton of fantasy and sci-fi short stories from I think like 30 authors. There's a ton of people in this collection and it sounds really good. I love reading short stories when I can read like one a day. It's really fun for me. Next up is read a book featuring a being that is uncanny, unearthly, and weird. It can be a god or a monster. Hard mode, the book is not related to the Cthulhu mythos. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but y'all know what I'm saying. It's basically just don't read H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> so people were saying the Tainted Cup fits for this. I have no clue how or why, but we're gonna go with it because I really want to read it. And the last one that I have, there's still one prompt that I have no clue what I'm gonna read yet, but the last one I have is read a book that features additional material such as a map, footnotes, glossary, all that. Hard mode, it contains at least two types of additional materials. And When the Moon Hatched actually has like three different additional materials to it. It has a map, it has a character guide, and it has something else in it that I can't remember. So it has a lot going on, which also exciting because I do want to read that this year. The only bingo prompt that I have not fulfilled yet and am just going to do on a whim is the book club pick. So you have to read a book that is um, active in the R Fantasy book club. And for hard mode, Mode, you have to read a current selection of either a book club read or a read along and participate in the discussion. What they're reading for April, I'm not interested in. So I'm just going to kind of wait and see what comes up in the coming month and pick a book from there. But here's a quick little overview. I'm just going to pop in, maybe just have it scroll down through because it's such a like long skinny <laughs> picture and let y'all see my bingo board. I'm so incredibly excited for this. I've never participated in something like this, so we'll see how it goes. I went ahead and printed the blank bingo board and put it in my reading journal. Let me try to find it quickly. So yeah, I went ahead and just pasted it in here. So I think my goal is I'm gonna keep my Canva version and if I switch out books, that's fine. But once I've read all the books, I think I'm gonna print another copy of this, put it on the other side and then put in the books that I read. And I'm excited. 
I am curious to see how this will go. Um, I, like I said, have never participated in our fantasy bingo. I've never even heard of it until this year, but I'm excited. I think it's a fun way to kind of challenge you to find like really specific books, but Anyways, to give y'all a quick reading update, I have started The Foxglove King. I'm enjoying it a fair bit at the moment, so I'm gonna keep my thoughts pretty minimal in this vlog because I am filming a specific vlog for this book and a couple other books that you'll be seeing probably in like end of May because <laughs> they're thick books and I need some time to read them. And I'm also still reading Lore of the Wilds. I really have not dedicated like any time to reading that this week. I just not loving it, so I'm not reading it. So so I'm gonna keep pushing through because my library copy is due back next week and I'm listening to it on Spotify. So I'm just trying to push through, but I'm starting to see why this book has such low ratings because uh, it's not the best, <laughs> which is really sad because this is a debut book and I really do want to support debut authors because I know it's probably so hard to get a book out into the world, whether you're indie pubbing or what have you. Which reminds me, I actually got an email from one of the authors that I beta read his series. Actually, he's the only author I beta read his series for and he's working on the final book in the series and I'm so sad. I have all the books somewhere behind me right there. They're real good. Um, my character, Amandra, she's the best if I do say so myself. But uh, yeah, I should actually put my glasses back on because things are blurry. Wow, I can actually see you now. <laughs> so anyways, it is, holy cow, it is 9.30. I should have been in bed like 20 minutes ago. So I'm gonna go take a quick shower and read probably like two pages of Lore of the Wild and go to bed. So toodaloo and I will chat with you all later. Uh, sorry for running through that bingo board so quickly. I feel like I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I talked that quickly with very few mess ups, you know, insane. Anywho, I just gotta stop talking, so chat with you all later. We're almost to the weekend, friends. It is Thursday and I went grocery shopping after work, bought a ridiculously priced amount of groceries, but it was all necessities. It was mainly produce and that's really what I was going for. So, just wanted to pop on here, say hello. Also, gonna be taking off the nails. I don't know if I showed you all my nails. I did them over the weekend, and they are like very strong. Um, I love these nails. They have lasted a very, very long time, but um, I'm getting sick of them. I don't know if this is just a me issue, but sometimes I get like annoyed with having longer nails, like, it's almost like a sensory issue, so I'm gonna be taking those off tonight because they're starting to bug me. But in terms of reading, I have very sad news, and that is I have DNF'd Lore of the Wilds. I know, I know, I'm really sad about it, but I made it 73 pages in, and I just can't take it anymore. Like, our main character is just annoying, and this world is boring, and the world building kind of sucks, and I'm just not a fan, so I'm DNFing it. So, really sad, but honestly, I was kind of maybe expecting it, just because I've seen nothing but bad reviews besides the author herself reviewing her own book, which I find an interesting choice, but anyways, I'm really sad about it, but I think it's a good decision on my part so I don't know I'm so I'm just reading the Foxglove King at the moment which I am quite enjoying so we'll see if I end up picking up something else this weekend because I do have lots of books lots of books that I need to read for Magical Readathon so I might pick up Iron Flame or I might pick up some Sarah Janet or some Zodiac Academy or something. I'm definitely not ready for the Memory of Souls, which is book three in the Ruin of King series. That's a little bit too high brain energy for me. <laughs> I don't think I'm there right now. So I think maybe just taking it a little slower this weekend in terms of reading, maybe just, you know, watch some movies and chills, kind of what I'm thinking. I also need to film a ton of videos. So that's really gonna be the main priority. But yeah, so uh, I didn't have to book. <laughs> 
which I'm sad about. So I decided I'm gonna skip my workout tonight to prioritize prepping my vegetables and fruit and stuff so it'll last in the fridge. Plus I need to make my lunch and maybe try to go to bed a little bit earlier because I'm super exhausted <laughs> today. So that's the plan. I always give myself one day out of the week to skip and it's usually a Wednesday or a Thursday is really when I need a day to not spend an hour working out after work and just focus on taking care of the plants or playing with the cats or just doing something else. So I'm picking today, but otherwise I do work out six days of the seven, which I think is pretty dang good. So I'm gonna go take care of all my vegetables and fruit, get them properly put away in the fridge. I just like chucked them in there so I could go eat dinner. And um, that's the plan. So I will chat with you all probably tomorrow to close out this vlog and give y'all any final updates. Wow, my hair <laughs> looks wild. But um, hello, it is late on Friday night. It's not that late, it's like 9.30. But uh, I'm gonna wrap up this vlog. I'd like to get all the clips on my computer and kind of see where we're at. But um, yeah, this was a pretty fast week. Anywho, I do have a quick little reading update for y'all. I was really itching for an audiobook today, which I've been feeling really burnt out with reading, honestly, the last couple of days. But I'm like, you know what? I should really try to work on some of the books that I have on my TBR because if I could just get through this month <laughs> of reading and get my magical TBR, magical readathon TBR done, then I'm basically free until August when I have to start reading Brandy Sandy books, which is gonna be scary. But um, yeah, so I chose to start an R Fantasy Bingo book, which is also good because I do want to focus on that. I did the math, I need to read about two books a month. With one month, I need to read three to get all the books done before next year, which really isn't bad. Like two books a month is not bad. So I have a fun concept that's going to be in my May TBR where, do you want to know? I'm going to tell you. I don't, I don't keep secrets. Well, I have like one secret vlog I'm working on, but I've kind of told you what it is. But anyways, so I'm going to spin a wheel and I have all of the R Fantasy Bingo books on this wheel and I'm going to spin twice and read two books on there. I think that's just gonna be a fun chaotic way to pick the books that I need to read for the month because they all sound amazing. And I did place a little book order today and I did order three of the books that I don't own or can't get from like Kindle Unlimited. So that's exciting. But anyways, so that's gonna be in May, which I'm excited about. But for the book that I did start today, I started the Book of M 
which is actually going to fulfill the hard mode. So I have hard mode now for the entire bingo board. So this fulfills the read a current book club selection for the R Fantasy book clubs. They have several. So one of them is reading the book of M, which I didn't think sounded that great until I actually started reading the book. And I'm like, holy cow, this is actually really good. So I'm listening to the audiobook, but also kind of following along on the ebook. So this is basically a book about a pandemic, which is a little jarring to be reading after having gone through an actual pandemic but this one's more like sci-fi-esque so we follow our main character who of course I can't remember his name but him and his wife are hunkered down in this shelter and we get introduced to them a little bit but this pandemic from what I can gather is that people lose their shadows like you know the shadow they cast behind them or whatever they lose that and then suffer a really bad dementia so they just start forgetting everything they forget who they are and eventually they forget how to eat and they forget how to breathe and so that's how they die is they just forget how to function like physically like you know breathing and eating and all that which is just terrifying and so it's affecting the whole world and we're getting kind of snippets back and forth between like before the pandemic happened and then current day and so this main character and his wife made a pact okay if one of us ever gets this sickness then they have all these rules in place Wow, I almost gave away a pretty big spoiler, so <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking now. But anyways, this book is just really fascinating. It's kind of sci-fi-esque. I saw somewhere that this book was being related to Station Eleven, which I haven't read, and another book, but it's definitely giving like sci-fi vibes, and it's honestly way better than I thought it was gonna be. The writing style is really beautiful, and I just am really loving the narration. I think the audiobook is really bringing this book to life. So. I'm really really enjoying it so I'm gonna keep going with that and I'm really glad that I have a complete fully done bingo board because it was really bugging me that I had one space that I hadn't found a book for and I'm like you know what just pick a book it's early in April just pick a book and read it so I'm really glad I got the book of M I'm just borrowing it from the library because it was available so I'm like uh borrow now so uh yeah that is gonna be it for this little vloggity vlog i hope y'all enjoyed so um that is gonna be it so if you made it this far into the video i'm gonna bring back the little emoji thing i think that's fun i haven't done that in a while so if you made it this far into the video comment some maybe some flower emojis in honor of the foxglove king because this cover is just gorgeous so um that's going to be it from me, so I will chat with you all in another video soon. Goodbye!